Hey guys, Victor Lynch here, Carolina Door Magazine with your Thursday night tackle bite. And let's talk about February. If you can believe it, it is already here. And I'm happy because this is a good time of year for those big bass to start moving up and feeding. Feeding heavily. Now this year, we haven't had that cold of a winter here. So, you know, water temperatures hadn't really got down real low. They probably haven't got below the mid-40s this year. Because our winter hasn't been that, hasn't been that cold yet. Thankfully and hopefully it won't. But anyways, here in North Carolina, you know, uh, waters are about 50 degrees right now, mid 40s. So you know, it's a good time to catch bass right now, and you don't have to go extremely deep for them. And that's a plus for most anglers. Um, I know a lot of anglers struggle real deep, but let's talk about some of the tactics we use this time of year. To catch these big pre spawn bass that are getting ready to just start feeding on everything shad, whatever they can get in their mouth, crawfish, you know, crawfish, you can't go wrong with that color this time of year. So let's talk about that. Let's talk about some of the key baits that I like to use in some of the key areas that I've found that are very productive this time of year on catching these big bass. So we'll start off by talking about a crankbait, a rattle trap, and a jerk bait. So let's start off talking those areas, these baits, and then we'll get into the areas that I find really productive this time of the year. Um, what I really like to start off with is either this crankbait heat right here is a KVD 1.5 flat side. This bait is extremely tight. It's got an extremely tight wobble to it. And I do like to throw this crawfish color, you know, real brown, yellow. And this bait will get down there to about eight foot. And with the water temperatures being only in about the 50s, that's a pretty good range for them to be. They're going to be in between 10 to 12. So that's, that's a good range for that crankbait to be throwing at. Um, no, I mentioned that that crankbait had a lot of tight wobble to it, which is a good thing this time of year. You don't want a crankbait that's got that wide wobble to it. You want one that's got, you know, the real tight wobble to it because bait is cold right now and they're not, they're not, they're not as agile as they would be in the summertime and they're not as free. So they're swimming real tight, real cold, just like you would be as you, when you get out of the shower, you're cold, you're not gonna be running around jumping and hooting and hollering. These these shad and this bait are real real cold. They're real timid right now and they're lucky they survived the winter because of the, the cold snap that came through. But you know, the, the tight wobble also really entices those bass. Um, it gets their reaction. When, that, when they see that coming through, that, that really just triggers them real quick. And that bait right there has caught me a lot of fish this time of year. Um, it's a real good bait. It's something I throw all the time during this time of year and the fall. But especially the springtime. Well, still late winter, you know, with things are starting to heat up a little bit. But I really believe in that bait. I think it does a lot. I mean, you can get them anywhere, actually, just about. But just remember, it's a... KVD 1.5 flat side, and these things are killer. They come with great hooks. Uh, another crankbait I want to talk about that many fishermen know about, you know, is just your simple number five shad wrap. I, I'll either throw it in a crawfish color or a shad color, switching up, seeing which one the fish want. Um, these won't go but to about five or seven foot, about the same as the KVD flat side. And they also have the tight wobble, which, you know, like I was saying, entices the bass. And it's small, you know. The, not always these bass are feeding on on great big shad. And, and that's a good profile for them right there because, like I said, they're not always feeding on the big shad. A lot of times they'll just get these little schools and, you know, th that matches the hatch right there. Um, And another bait we can talk about that I really enjoy throwing that I'll talk about and is a rattle trap. This is a Rapala rip and wrap number six. This thing is killer. I love rattle traps. As you guys may have seen my last videos, I love them. They're so versatile. Of course, the rattle trap is tight. Most of you guys know that, and it's got the rattles in it, and that's what really gives this bait gives this bait away is the rattles. I mean, that the bass hear it from a mile away. You know, you can be throwing it. 30 feet out and you can hear the rattles in the water and that's getting their attention. You know, you can fish a rattle trap many different ways. Like, uh, 
throw it out there, you, you know, just break the cadence stuff all the time. A rattle trap is a killer way to catch a bass, big bass in the winter time. You know, it, it's something that a lot of fishermen have a lot of luck on. It's something I have a lot of luck on. But you know, it's you know, I'll, I'll either throw a shad color just like in the crankbait, or I'm gonna throw a crawfish color in a rattle trap. But this time of year, with it being cold, I'm gonna throw the I'm gonna throw the shad color until it gets to about March or April, and then I'll pick up that crawfish. But unless I'm around rocks, which we're gonna get talking about here in a minute, I'm gonna throw one of these crawfish colors when I'm around rocks, because you know that's where crawfish live. And that's what the bass are feeding on mainly if they're there most of the time. Not always, but most of the time. Um, and let's talk about one more bait that I really like to throw sometimes. Uh, I'm not as good as I should be at this, but a jerk bait. This is a Lucky Craft jerk bait. This is a pointer, deep diver, and I also have a Rick Clun jerk bait here. These are actually really good jerk baits too. It's hard to be Lucky Craft, but these Rick Cluns really they can get the job done as well you know you want to fish those in good clear water suspended over over you know maybe some rock or something you know you want you know that you're using a jerk bait to catch suspended bass so this is a really good bait this time of year because it's cold you're sitting there twitching it because the bait is twitching like i said earlier the bait's cold you're sitting there twitching that jerk bait making it look like it's dying it's a cold shed and the bass will come up there and crush it um now some of the areas I don't like to fish this year is rock, huge rock. I'm not talking about fish rock, pea gravel, anything. I'm talking about rock as big as your head. You're talking about riprap where a bridge is or off a point or off a flat. If you can find these three areas this time of year, you're going to do really good. A bridge, you know, it's a common place to go catch fish down the riprap, but it's a good place to go catch a lot of fish. I mean, they're going to be good quality fish. They might not be your biggest ones along the, the, the bridge riprap, but, you know, it's a good way to get some good keepers in the boat. But, you know, if you, if you, if you go on the backs of these creeks that have these long points, long flat points coming off of them, with these crankbaits or, this, or these rattle traps, these jerk baits with these big rock, the, baits are, the bait is usually over top of the channel and the bass are up under them on the edge of those channels where they can move up and down on those rock flats, you know, and eat that bait. Whenever they get hungry, they come up and eat it. Um, they, they, they really, that's a really good area to catch them at. Uh, I, if I was in a creek this time of year, I'm going to go find some big rock, big, big, like I'm saying guys, big rock. Uh, later on in the year, the, the rocks don't get smaller until they get to the spawn. And then, you know, it's just, it's a cycle. They'll, they'll go back out to bigger rock. But, you know, another key for the thing for the rocks is it heats up with the sun. So, you know, right now the bass are looking for that warm water. They're going to stay with those rocks all day long, especially on a sunny day, because they're going to warm up faster than anything. So, you know, if you can find a bank like Rip Wrap, or if you can find a red clay bank with big rock on it, you better make sure you fish that, because that's going to be a good area for them to be. These bass are looking to warm up. They're looking to feed on fish. You know, it's just a good year to catch the big fish. And, guys, I'm telling you, if you go out there, Make sure you have your drag set right, because if you get a hold of one, it's going to usually be a good one this time of year. Guys, I hope you tune in next week for the next episode of Thursday Night Tackle Bites. Um, I hope you guys took something away from this. I hope you learned something from it. I hope I was helpful helping you guys. Maybe next time you got to use some of these tips and catch some of these big bass I'm talking about for this time of the year. But guys, anyways, we do appreciate you tuning in. If you guys want, you can add me on Facebook. Send me a message on Facebook. If you got any further questions, I have no problem answering any questions. Um, maybe you can teach me something. Tell me something. Um, also, add me on Instagram, V Lynch Fishing, on Instagram, and Snapchat at Nitro Bass Twelve Seventeen. I uh, look forward to always looking at big bass pics. So maybe you guys can add me on there, and we can send pics back and forth when we're fishing. Anyways, guys, appreciate you tuning in. Victor Lynch and Carolina Door Magazine.